Today, we will be taking a look at the best and worst browsers for Linux. My requirements for a good browser are that they must have number one, good performance, number two, great privacy, and number three, availability on most Linux distros. Chromium is an open source browser by Google, which Chrome is based on. It uses the Blink engine and is very similar to Chrome. It has the same looks, same feel, same layout, and similar performance, but without the extra features and spyware built in. Unfortunately, Google recently removed syncing from Chromium and limited several Chrome APIs or features. It is fairly fast, although like most Chromium-based browsers, not extremely fast. It also includes profiles, which are like separate identities in your browser. They have different bookmarks, history, and data, and you can create, delete, and switch between different profiles. All of the browsers on this list, other than Epiphany, have profiles. Finally, Chromium has the ability to find a certain word on a web page with the Find tool by pressing Ctrl plus F, which all browsers on this list have. Epiphany, or Gnome Web as it is now called, is a fast, simple, and open source browser that uses Apple's WebKit engine, the same one used in Safari. It doesn't have many features, although this is fine for a lot of people and makes Epiphany lightweight. One, features, uh, one feature it does have is a reader mode like Firefox. Speaking of Firefox, it supports Firefox Sync and comes with basic ad and tracker blocking capabilities. It looks and functions similarly to Safari, and Apple even recommends it as the best browser for testing WebKit features on Linux. Due to all of this, it is often known as Linux's Safari, because that's basically what it is. Brave is an open source Chromium based browser that is lightning fast and provides excellent privacy and a powerful built in ad and tracker blocker called Brave Shields. There is some telemetry, but it's not bad telemetry and you can easily turn it off in settings. Brave is also making an ecosystem of sorts. They have their own search engine called Brave Search, which uses its own algorithm and provides better search results than most other search engines. Brave Talk for video conferencing the privacy-respecting Leo AI chatbot, a news feed called Brave News, the ability to open a Tor window, and the controversial Brave Wallet and Brave Rewards. Brave Wallet is a crypto wallet using Brave's Basic Attention Tokens, or BAT, cryptocurrency, and Brave Rewards rewards you BAT tokens for seeing private ads. It has syncing capabilities, although they're weird because there's no Brave account that you, use, that you use to sync your devices. Instead, you make a sync chain, and it generates a secure sync chain code that you enter into the Brave browser on the device you want to sync. Tor is a very popular Firefox-based browser with a big focus on anonymity. On opening Tor, you may notice that it asks you to connect to the Tor network. The Tor network sends your traffic through three random secure servers, or relays, in the Tor network. The last relay in the circuit, the exit relay, then sends the traffic out onto the public internet. This makes browsing on Tor slow, but very secure. It also contains many privacy features, such as the Reset Identity feature, which erases all of your data and starts a new browsing session unlinkable to your previous one, the ability to create a new Tor circuit if the exit relay you're using can't load the website you're trying to visit, in which case that site will be automatically reloaded over the new Tor circuit along with any other instances of that site when manually reloaded, and more. It is the main browser used for accessing the dark web, which primarily uses .onion sites. By default, Tor will see if there is a .onion version of the website you're visiting and switch to the .onion version if available. All data, except for bookmarks of course, is erased when exiting the browser. You can also switch between standard, safer, and safest security levels, and um, these and many more pri uh, security features make Tor an awesome privacy browser.
Movad Browser is a Tor-based browser made by the VPN company Movad in collaboration with the Tor project. The goal is to make an extremely private browser, like Tor, but without the Tor network, which makes it much faster and more suitable for daily use. It has two extensions out of the box. The Movad Browser extension, which adds an optional additional layer of security if you have Movad VPN installed, and uBlock Origin, which blocks ads and trackers. Just like Tor, you can also reset your data by resetting your identity, and you can switch between standard, safer, and safest security levels. Also, again, like Tor, all data except for bookmarks, of course, is erased when exiting the browser, and due to this, you can't save any logins or passwords. So no autofill. Firefox is my favorite browser. It is a very popular, independent, open source browser that uses its own Gecko engine. It's extremely secure and private, blocking trackers by default, and it has some telemetry, but like Brave, it's not bad telemetry and it can be disabled in the settings. Regarding privacy, Firefox comes with total cookie protection by default, which puts a website's cookies in a cookie jar that only that website can access, preventing other websites from reaching into that cookie jar and collecting your information. It also has a beautiful interface, being the first browser to use floating tabs, and is lightning fast, beating most other browsers in page load times. You can make a Mozilla account and use Firefox Sync, which provides hands down the best syncing capabilities out of any browser. Firefox also includes many features, like a reading mode which removes clutter from a web page to make it easy to read, an in-browser screenshot tool, containers which are tab groups that allow you to be logged into different accounts and do different things, isolated from normal tabs and other containers, picture-in-picture -picture mode to see a video in a separate dedicated window that you can drag anywhere, Firefox view where you can see your tabs and history from other device and tabs from other devices as well in sync. Use uh, you can use extensions from the Firefox add-ons store at addons.mozilla.org, and there are so many more features. Like Brave, Mozilla also has an ecosystem of sorts with Firefox Relay to create a fake proxy email, Mozilla's own VPN service called Mozilla VPN, Firefox Monitor to see if your information was compromised in a data breach, Pocket to discover, save, and consume content, and more. Ghostery Private Browser is an open-source Firefox-based privacy browser made by the privacy company Ghostery. It includes the security of Firefox together with the recently revamped Ghostery Privacy extension, which has top-of-the-line ad blocking and tracking protection, and a beautiful new interface. It also comes with Ghostery's own search engine called Ghostery Private Search, which, like Brave Search, uses its own algorithm, and it has really fast page load times similar to Firefox. It's an awesome privacy browser overall. Now that we've covered the best browsers for Linux, let's take a look at the worst. Opera is a great browser with a beautiful interface, okay performance although it's pretty slow, and tons of features, a little too many features. These features include an ad blocker, a free VPN, which is just a proxy that gives you crappy performance and logs a little more data than it should, a customizable sidebar with workspaces, Opera's Area AI, some social apps, a music player, bookmarks and history, and way more that you can add and remove from the sidebar. A very beautiful and customizable homepage called the Speed Dial, an in-browser screenshot tool like Firefox called Snapshot, battery saver mode, syncing with an Opera account, Opera cashback which gives you money back when, you sh when shopping in the browser, Lucid mode which enhances image and video quality online, picture in picture mode or in this case video pop out, workspaces, tab groups or in this case tab islands, Opera flow which lets you send files, links and notes between synced devices, pin boards to save and collect content, 
a unit converter, a personalized newsfeed, and so much more. Unfortunately, on top of being proprietary software, it was recently bought up by a Chinese company and is now Chinese spyware, even though their headquarters are based in Norway. Opera tracks you and harvests your personal data like Chrome and has had scandals fairly recently, such as offering predatory loans through Android apps. So yeah, steer clear of Opera. Microsoft Edge was, ne was never very popular or well received, but when it became Chromium based, people started to use it. It doesn't have the nicest looking interface and it's pretty slow, but it is very secure. Microsoft also claims that it protects your privacy, but Edge's privacy is, well, edgy at best, like all Microsoft products. Firstly, it's proprietary, obviously, and of course it tracks you and collects your private information. It also has tons of features, including Microsoft Copilot, formerly known as Bing AI, the ability to find coupons and compare prices of a product, reviewing price trends to see if it's the right time to buy, Microsoft Cashback, which is like Opera Cashback, Read Aloud, which will read the web page aloud, a reading view, an in-browser document editor with grammar correction and suggestions, sleeping tabs, which put tabs to sleep after an hour of inactivity, Startup Boost, which keeps Edge running in the background with minimal resources for quicker startup. Clarity Boost, which is like Opera's Lucid mode. Password Monitor to check if your passwords were leaked in a data breach. Microsoft Defender Smart Screen to protect you from malicious sites and malware. Split Mode to see two websites side by side. A sidebar similar to Opera's with different features and the ability to add social apps. Syncing with a Microsoft account. And so many more features. It seems Edge has taken some inspiration from Opera, as it has a similar amount of features, and a lot of features are very similar to Opera's. Other than being bloated with features, Edge is just Chrome, but with Microsoft's spyware instead of Google's. Google Chrome is by far the most used browser out there at the moment, with over 2 billion users worldwide. It has slow page load times, is very secure, and is very bad for privacy. One good thing it's doing is removing support for third-party cookies, which will be gradually rolled out to everyone throughout 2024, starting with 1% of their users and then moving to 100%. Other than that, it's removing support for ad blockers with Manifest V3, takes a big chunk of your RAM, cheats by adding an intentional 5 second delay for YouTube on non-Chromium based browsers for some ad block users, and of course tracks you and collects your personal information to feed you personalized ads and sell your data to other companies and the government. Oh, and Google is facing a $5 billion lawsuit for collecting your private data in incognito mode, so incognito is not safe either. Chrome doesn't have as many features as Opera and Edge, but it does have a very useful address bar. Uh, address bar which lets you of course visit websites, search for facts with Google, calculate, translate, find your files and documents from Google Drive, convert units, and more. You can also connect your Google account and use Google Sync, use tabs, tab groups, control audio and video coming from another uh, tab by opening the Media Hub, use extensions from the Chrome Web Store, cast Chrome onto another screen, and more. There are many good features in Chrome, but the drawbacks outweigh the benefits, so avoid Chrome at all costs. Like this video and subscribe so that you don't miss our awesome Linux and tech videos and join the Penguin Byte Discord community with the link in the description below. Thanks for watching, see you next time.